Hi everyone and welcome to this next episode of Keeping the Real in Real Estate. Today I want to talk to you about summer parties, which seems like a weird topic to go in a real estate podcast, but this has been an enlightening and rather entertaining endeavor for me. Obviously it's summer, people are getting together, family, friends, even business associates. And it's so interesting to me as I sit back and I watch and listen to these conversations all occur about how everyone in the room, regardless of credential, is a real estate expert. It's fascinating to me. I don't think that there's another industry out there where so many people think that they know what's going on and you know only they're right. I mean, I can't really imagine going into my doctor's office and telling him what I think is wrong and what protocols I should be taking with absolutely no medical training at all. Um, and yet, people will talk to each other like they are experts. Um, and it's interesting because I'm what I'm really hearing is a regurgitation of what's going on in the news or that they're hearing third hand from somebody else. Because if they were hearing this information from another real real estate professional, they wouldn't be saying the things that they're saying. All year I've been touting the same themes. We are low on inventory, interest rates are not going anywhere, buyers are struggling, and investors are struggling, and it's a seller's market. It's not really that different now. It's summer, so there is a different volume that's out there, but there's the same trend that's been occurring all year long. Inventory is down, and it's down because Quite frankly, sellers are afraid that they don't want to sell their house with either no mortgage or a low interest mortgage and get into something that's a higher interest. And if you break down just that one point, I get it. Who wants to pay more for the same thing? But are you getting the same thing? I think what's not being considered in this this mental equation is all the other components that you either give away or get by making a move. So I could tell you I live in a large house. So I have a five bedroom home that's close to 5,000 square feet if you don't count the 2,500 square foot finished basement. I just live here with my husband and my dogs. Some would think, oh my, why do you need that amount of space? Now do I need it? No. I like space and I find a way of utilizing every square inch of this house. Um, So for me, it's okay. But when we talk about the potential of selling it, not only will we reap the benefits of the inflated market so we would get more for it than we would have ever thought to get, um, and we've purchased it 13 years ago, uh, but when you count the taxes that we pay, the amount of oil that we go through, the amount of propane we go through, because we have several things that are fired by propane, electricity, insurance, the lawn, the snow, the cleaning lady. Um, I know I'm forgetting stuff. There's several, several thousand dollars that we expend every year just to live in this house. And that's not part of the mortgage because our house is paid off. So you would ask, then why don't you sell your house? And that's a great question because our Our plans for the future are to move out of state and we're not ready to make that change yet because we want to time it with retirement. So we've tried to decide, does it make sense to sell it now and perhaps get something smaller, closer to my husband's job, um, that would highly impact me, or do we keep things status quo and just let it ride? Since we love our house and we have not really determined that getting closer to his job would benefit us in a, in a way that makes sense, we've decided to just hang on for a few more years. But that's not the case to a lot of people that I'm speaking with. They actually do want to move, but have not moved because they feel they're not going to find a place to live, which is a popular one, or they say that they don't want to spend more on their mortgage. Now, if, if you bought your house last year, let's just take one year at a time. In Fairfield County, of single family homes in the whole Fairfield County last May, 2022, there were 1,303 new listings. Right now, 925 new listings. That's a decrease, uh, it's down 29%. So 
That speaks to the low inventory. Pending sales. There were 818 last May, 691 this May, down 15.5%. Closed sales. There were 700 in May of 2022 and 513 this year, down 26.7%. The average sales price in May of 2022 was $1,002,000. Now, this May, 2023, single family homes in all of Fairfield County, 1.2 million. That's up 20%. That's in one year. Now think about what you paid for your house, whether it was one year, two years, five years, 20 years. If you can make one year, 20%, think about the equity you have in your home, especially if you've been paying into its mortgage over the course of several years. Now you can take that money, yep, you can put it in the stock market, or you can use it to buy the next house. Now if you're downsizing, your house, theoretically, will be smaller, less maintenance, less cost of upkeep, and you would have paid most or all of the price of the house from the equity that you're getting from the house that you're selling if you're going from something large to something small. If you're going from something small to something large, yeah, your expenses are gonna go up, but they would have gone up anyway. So they're just going up incrementally with the higher interest rate, but that can always change when the interest rates go down, you can refinance. And now you would have put in one, two, three years worth of equity into your house, plus whatever you would have thrown in from the sale of yours, it's a win all around. I wish sellers would stop being so scared. This is the perfect opportunity to do what real estate is meant to do, and that's to build wealth. The market's up. You sell when it's up. Yeah, you're gonna have to pay on the buy side, but you're getting something. You're either getting less expense because it's smaller, better quality of life because the house is bigger or a better neighborhood or closer to work or whatever those boxes that need to be ticked, they have value. Not everything is a dollar value that's on a mortgage statement, but there are other components that equate to quality of life. That's why we're not selling. My quality of life will go down if I have to move closer to his job because I know what's going to happen. We're going to get this teeny tiny place that's going to make it much, much further for me to work because I work all over the state and he works in the lowest part of the state. And if sometimes the accommodations that you'll get, like I have dogs and I need a space for these dogs. So when we worked it all out, our quality of life is better where we are, even though it's larger and we're paying more for it because it just works out that way. But you have to value what's your quality of life worth to you. And uh, is the current state of the economy causing you to not make a change? Now, certainly, if your job is in jeopardy and you're uncertain whether you'll be working in the next several months, do not make a move. But if all things are equal and you're just looking at an interest rate that's higher than maybe what you want to pay and an elevated pricing market, you get it on the sell side and you don't always have to pay it on the buy side. It depends on what you get. Now, if you're a buyer, I feel for you, I know it is very difficult out there. I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. But I think, again, buyers come in with this core group of fears. They don't wanna overpay, they don't wanna overextend themselves, they don't want to, don't want to, don't want to, rather than say, I can, I can, I can. I can get the house that I want. I can't afford it. I can do this. Hey, these people have been saving for a long time in a lot of cases. Not all, but in a lot of cases, they have some money to spend. And maybe it makes, if you approve for 450, maybe you look for a 375 house. But at least you're in a house and you're not paying rent and you're not living with mom and dad or you're not in accommodations that are not giving you the higher quality of life. And I mean, isn't that what it's all about? Now, the ones that I think are a little bit more tricky are investors. I'm sorry, investors. I know it's really, really hard out there because the prices are elevated. It's making your margins very, very thin. And because you're working off of certain formulas, I get it. I know that it is not a perfect environment for you. We don't see a lot of foreclosures. We're not seeing a lot of 
situations that make it attractive to investors. But it doesn't mean there are not opportunities out there. You just have to be a little bit more flexible and be a little more frugal with the costs. You don't have to put in gold faucets, but I will say, don't do chintzy work. As a realtor, when I'm looking at the pictures, I look and say, oh, it's a flip. Let's see how well they did this. And I walk in and instantly, I know when you've painted over cabinets, I know when you've put kind of like a Band-Aid on things. And as a professional real estate agent, I'm going to relay that information to my buyers. So it's not worth it to put in poor quality. But it doesn't also mean that you have to get Carrera Marble and, and do the most expensive things. There are midways of things. And as somebody who has a designer's eye, I'm able to help you go in and say, I know that you have your suppliers and all that, and I get that, but I can tell you this is what buyers are looking for and what impresses them. Um, and maybe it is a way of accommodating a renovation um, budget a little bit less so that you can put a bit of a higher offer in and still come out way ahead of what you thought. Because honestly, maybe you're not making $100,000 on a property, but if you make 50000 versus 0000 I'd go for the 50K. That's just me. Um, I will say that there's also another opportunity because the supply chain has opened up a little bit. Builders are building again, and there are opportunities for getting new construction. So whether you're a buyer or a seller, if you're concerned that you may not be able to find something out there, you may want to consider talking with a builder um, and not necessarily somebody who's going to build your house from scratch, but somebody who started a home that... Um, would love to have a buyer in place before it goes to market. You'll, it'll give you a chance to customize it a little bit and it'll give them the peace of mind that the house is sold. Um, so those are, that's just another option. And, you know, I'm very passionate about what I do and I'm, I get frustrated when I hear people talking with authority and, and mis, giving misfacts and, and misinformation. Um, if you have questions, if, even if you just want to get a sense of what the market's doing and you have no intentions of buying or selling, I'm happy. Let's go grab some coffee or drinks or let's just sit down in the park and let's talk real estate. I'm, I will do it any day of the week. It is something I thoroughly enjoy and um, I feel like I'm knowledgeable about it and can help anybody get a better understanding of the market. I mean, that's what this podcast is about. It's about getting what's really happening in the real day-to-day -day goings on in this market and, and predictions of what's to come. I cannot tell you what is happening in 2024. Uh, let the experts do that. I could tell you what's happening right now. And right now is a great time to sell and any time is a great time to buy. Get into the real estate market, get your portfolio started. And if you don't know where to start, that's what I'm here for. So thanks for listening. Until next time.